All right. Hey, folks. We are live, and I am your host, Dash V. And as you can see, I recently got laid. So, um, yeah, me too. <laughs> Not me, though. <laughs> I'm too young for that. All right. You want to introduce yourself? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Crowded Attic, back again. So, my son, Crowded Attic, joining us again. Thank you, Thomas. And then... Oh, we got somebody else here. He also got laid. I did. It's me, Tyler. The I'm back. Pugmire. The T Pugmire <laughs> is back. People, people everywhere have been asking where the Fugmire is. The Pugmire and folks, I found him. I found him and brought him back. So, so yes. first, I guess, for, first we'll, we'll we'll get to the, the the first short order of business here. Um, it actually T Pugmire. It was your birthday, like yesterday, right? Yes, it was yesterday. So. Happy happy birthday. Are we allowed to say how old you are? Sure, go for it. All happy right. birthday, bro. Ty, Tyler Pugmire, first, actually, we're not going to say how, whole, how old he is. We're going to ask the folks in the chat, right, if you can guess, guess his age. Guess how old he is, right? In the, so if somebody guesses correctly, then nothing special at all will happen, but um, we'll be very impressed at your astute intellect. So um, We're hoping you guys guess wild answers because – that's what makes the internet so funny. Yeah, yeah. At at, at the real time, uh, you know, at the real Donald Trump says, um, "I I'm guessing that he's just great, great, the greatest ever, great, great." We know you're making that up. What are you talking about? That was a real post. That's a there real. There is tweet. no post right there. Are you on Twitter? Um. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. Oh. Let's All right. No, no. <laughs> you can't call me out on the show for making, you know, reporting fake checks. What is that table. too? Is that too political? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Tyler. It's great to have you back on the show, my friend. It's good to be back. Yeah, well, so uh, I can make this more of a regular thing. Yeah. Yeah, so Tyler recently he had some. Um, he's working on a new uh, filming space, um, and he's he's got some some stuff going on with work, change shifts, and that kind of thing. So it's made it kind of a little bit uh, difficult. But we're, we're trying to work out the time and trying to work out the place. Um, and I've actually got some special footage of. Uh, I, I actually went to where Tyler lived for his birthday, right? Yes, so, you did. Into the layer of Hugmire. <laughs> Yeah, into the layer of the T Pugmire. So, folks, I'll be sharing that footage with you later. I'll be that separately from this show. I'll show you that everything kind of leading up to the surprise of the T Pugmire. So, I, I he found, didn't know about it. Yeah, no, I, I found I, I, him and hung out with him in his native habitat. Yep, <laughs> that must have been interesting. It was actually. We yeah. went to Tyler. Tell me a bit about. We went to a local game shop and uh, talk a little bit about all the stuff we saw at the game shop. Yeah, we went to uh, a local store called uh, World's Game Store. It's in Salt Lake City. Uh, they have two two locations. Uh, we went to which one I'd never been to before because I want to check it out. And they had some really cool stuff. I was I was impressed um, that they had a an MSX, um, which I'd never seen. They had the Amiga 32 CD. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Amiga yeah. CD32. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'd never seen that either. There's a lot of lot of Cool I've stuff. never seen those in the wild ever. Yeah, that's very cool. So it looks like this local game store might be a good place to to go if you live in Utah for for getting mm -hmm. some rare consoles and games. They had two CDIs. Actually. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. Now that's, and, something, that's something that surprises me. Yeah, yeah. So that's they had two, technically but doesn't no, surprise me. They had two CDIs, but absolutely no controllers for it whatsoever. Not even the spoon controller. What? Wow. Who you does know, that? You know, I almost told them about my adapter, so then I was like, eh, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was okay. He was, he was a little bit too friendly and definitely loud. Yeah, he had like two volumes, like high and off. That was it. Right, right. But that said, that said, he was a nice guy. He was, he was oh, definitely yeah. a friendly guy. Um, you know, he talked to us. Quite a bit. Uh, gave us a quite a, a bit of a rundown of different things that were at the show or at the store, rather. They also had a Coleco Gemini, right? Oh, nice. Yes, they did. 
which I didn't even know existed, honestly, before uh, before going to that show. So recently, um, so yeah, that, that shop. You mean what's that? You said show. You meant shop. I meant shop. Yeah. So Tyler also managed to anybody that's been watching the show. I guess we'll kind of lean into pickups a bit. Um, anybody that's been watching the show knows that I've been trying like heck to get my hands on one of these, like basically forever, and it's been impossible because here in the Bay Area. They sell out instantly and then reappear magically on Craigslist at five times the price. So Scalpers. It's out of control out here. Isn't so it out of control everywhere? Almost. It is. It is pretty much. So <laughs> so Tyler, after picking me up, um, it's, it's kind of ironic. So Tyler picks me up at the airport as a surprise for his birthday. And um, he ends up taking me to a Target where I was able to score one of these. How? So they had 40 of them in stock. 40 yeah. of them in stock. Like, and that was what? in the afternoon, too. What? Yeah. That, yes. Yeah, that, that was later in the day. So. This, this wow. is how there, might, there must not be many gamers in Utah. There is, but they... I, I think know. they have fewer stores. Already had it? I think they have fewer stores, right? Hmm. So the stores that they have get... Probably the areas get similar amounts of in, in, uh, inventory... But um, but they probably have to split it across fewer stores, so each store ends up getting more effectively in their inventory. Versus, you know, there's yeah. like 20 WalMarts just in San Jose. So yeah, we have a lot of WalMarts too. Well, that was yeah. an awesome find. I'll definitely say that. So um, so yeah, I, I thought it was an awesome find uh, as well. I was technically already over budget for this paycheck, um, but my <laughs> wife allowed um, allowed me to to kind of make the. I made the pickup first and then told her, and she didn't require me to take it back. So <laughs> that's how that's how that worked out. So what's nice is this is actually like a full legit U.S. territory one, um, as opposed to the one that I thought I did a pretty good job finding the Super Nintendo Mini uh online am i holding it upside down no i was right side up before now i'm upside down there we go oh there we go there we go so uh, I, isn't that is that in your um the room with the pinball machine it, it was i took it out um hmm. so i i found this on ebay for only five dollars more than the retail price which i thought was a good deal um hmm. ordered it got it in and then i discovered um somewhere here on the back um, I don't know if you can see right there, but there's a little disclaimer that says that this particular um, this particular kit does not come with a wall adapter. Oh, so it's the European one. Or so literally, I just have a USB cable, and <laughs> I hope it's still safe to plug in and use with US USB stuff. It should be. So, but that was kind of a that was kind of a bummer once I got it. That I was like, what the hell. So maybe that's why it was five dollars above the retail price because the guy probably bought it, realized, oh, it doesn't have an adapter cord, and he decided to sell it. Yeah. Well, I, I figured for um, you know, for only five dollars more than retail, that basically covered shipping. Yeah, so that, that's, I was that's like, a pretty good deal. Okay, fine. Um, I also picked up um, Axiom Verge, the Multiverse Edition for the Nintendo Switch. So I've heard great things about this. I heard this is kind of like a Metroid slash, you know, um, Mega Man slash Castlevania type game. Yeah, basically. Yeah, have not played it at all, but really looking forward to it. So um, also, I, I couldn't believe that they had the the, the multiverse edition. This was at, at um, Best Buy. Uh, I think it was something that they'd had on display previously and then decided they needed to sell it because it was the only one that they had there. And I've never seen this out in the wild here in uh, San Jose. So, um, so that was neat. We, we also, um, we went to our own local place. We were down in Santa Cruz and we went to a place called level up, uh, video games. It was a great video game store. I'll just say that. They had... It was an excellent video game store. Now they didn't have the consoles, uh, and they definitely didn't have the, the variety of the, the, um, of things that we saw at the game store that we went to in Salt Lake, but I do. But they were still pretty good. They had they had quite a few. Um, they had quite a few um, titles for Xbox 360, the original Xbox, PlayStation 2, PlayStation One, and all these uh, and all the other platforms that came before the ones we now know today, uh, which are Xbox One, PlayStation Four, and 
Nintendo yeah. Switch. They actually make custom so, Game Boy and Game Boy Advances. They buy all the different colored pieces, parts, and different uh, cases and buttons and everything, and they will custom build uh, Game Boys uh, to your specification from those pieces, parts. Um, and the prices were all really, really reasonable. So while I was there, I picked up a, uh, I picked up an extra. I only had one, so I picked up a second uh, Mad Cat's gun for my original Xbox. Um, this is really good because it works on um, CRT HD as well as CRT uh, standard def TVs. Some light guns only work with the old old CRTs. This works with all the different CRTs. So basically, it's only LCD TVs that this doesn't work with. Um, so that's a that's a good one. Um, and I think this was uh, yeah. You can see the price there. This was six bucks, six ninety five. Wow, which was really really good. Uh, price for that so if you want to play house of the dead or things like that or some of the main gun games you can you can use that with those um also in the way of controllers and these were uh 12.95 a piece um i found these really cool controllers for the playstation one and two nice so you can so you can play it like you're playing a nintendo entertainment system absolutely with more buttons of course yeah it's got uh it's got analog sticks down there at the bottom and then it's got your buttons here at the top, it's got two kind of uh, R1 and R2. That's like a split button design. You can probably see there. Yeah. So I, that'd be a little bit difficult to wield, but I mean, so who's that made by? What's that? So who are they made by? Mad Cats, actually. Mad Cats. Okay. Yeah. So and why buy one when you can buy two for twice the price? <laughs> so because really it'll be condition. two times more expensive. I mean, all of these, like, usually when you go into a store and stuff and you find things like these, like, the, the, the controllers are all, like, janky and you feel, like, dirty just holding them and you want to take them home and instantly clean them, or, and they're scuffed up and everything. These are all, I mean, they look they clean darn like, good. They, clean them. they even give it their own packaging, which is really cool. The entire yeah, the shop... packaging has some nice branding there. Hmm. Yeah, the entire shop, like, there's a little museum bit in the shop with, like, Different consoles, different games, and different collectibles. Yeah. There's another. There's another room where they they had a mini room where they had all these different consoles and chairs, and you could like put any game you wanted in there to test it out, or or you could rent out that area and just just start playing away at those video games just for fun. You could yeah, have like yeah. birthday party events like, there. Yeah. And so. Here's uh they give out stickers and stuff all nicely themed if you want to show your uh, if you want to oh, show cool. your level up love. And what's um, cool is they also do mail orders. Yeah. Even so they, to other states. They did have a decent selection as well. I was finally able to find a copy of something in my VG Collect wish list, which was Defenders of Oasis, which is one of the very few, possibly the only um, JRPG for the Sega Game Gear. Um so, and if somebody else knows me to be not correct on that, um, definitely drop down in the chat, um, either live or in the doodly doo on YouTube. Let me know because as I, you know, Googled and looked and everything, trying to find a Game Gear JRPG, this is this is the only thing I found. This is the only thing that came up. So, um, and I put it on my wish list and haven't been able to find it until there. And even that was, I, I felt reasonably priced, about eighteen bucks. Um, which is not bad. I mean, the the cartridge basically looks brand new. Yeah, all the nice. all the games there look so clean and brand new. Like, yeah. they had some can... homebrews there. They had the Japanese version of Super Mario Brothers two. They had a couple of the Castlevania uh, homebrews and things. They had like some that. reproductions yeah. as well. Yep. So so and they sold replacement for about two three dollars. They sold replacement PS uh, four or I'm sorry PS three. Uh, controllers controller joysticks which was nice because um i i kind of needed a few replacements for reasons we don't need to get into on the show yeah the playstation 3 controllers can be pretty notorious for getting I mean, the joysticks a bit damaged if you if, use them too much if a 15 year old uses them at all yeah yep actually no not a 15 year old if a <laughs> nine year old uses them because so that was yeah. that was level up. Um, at the thrift store, I managed to get my hands on one of these for about uh, a, uh, it was nineteen dollars, but they were having a sale on blue items, so I actually got it for fifteen dollars. Um, it's a fighting stick that works with PS2, PS3, and uh, P3 
PC through uh, the USB. Nice. So it might even work with the Xbox uh, One through USB. I haven't tried, but um, it's a pretty neat. Uh, it's a pretty neat design. It's got a computer program where you can program the different buttons and all that other stuff to what they do. It's um, basically a way to feel like you're playing in the arcade when you're just playing on the game console. So, yeah, which which is really nice. Yeah, looking it up online, it looks like those normally go for uh, the cheaper ones go for thirty bucks. The more expensive ones can go for sixty or seventy bucks. So to pick it up for fifteen was actually quite a bargain. Assuming it works, I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you so, might want to test it out soon. Yeah, yeah. So Tyler, any any pickups recently or anything? Yeah, so I got uh, two two things recently. Um, so as Chris mentioned. Um, I woke up early. I woke up early on Friday, and I went to Target, and I got myself uh, NES Classic. Also, um, had I known I was going to go there later in the day, I would have just waited. But you know, <laughs> so I did that. Um, and then for my birthday, I got Detroit Become Human from Chris, and I'm going to try this tomorrow. I haven't got around to it yet, but I'm going to play it tomorrow. It's on my list of things awesome. to do. Awesome, awesome. Is your are you gonna are you gonna play it uh, the first time you play? Are you gonna play with your wife around, kind of watching, or are you gonna go yeah, solo? Probably. Awesome. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, interesting to see what she thinks. She's a she's a casual gamer more, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I think she might enjoy watching uh, watching this, especially if um, they encourage you the first time through. Even if you think what you've made is a horrible decision. They encourage mm -hmm. you the first time through to just see it through to the end. Yeah, just stick with it. Yeah, and then take more liberties uh, in the further in the further playthroughs. My wife and I are on our third playthrough of the game right now, and um, we there's definitely some choices. I'm like, ooh, this is going to turn out badly. So th there's some stuff we did way better this time around, and then there's other stuff um, that we definitely uh, definitely did better the first and second times around. <laughs> so it's I don't think we're going to get the mega happy ending, but um, It'll be interesting to see how it how it turns out, just how far we deviate, because because one of the one of the stories is just going way off the rails in a way it never did the first time. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so I, yeah. So I'm excited to check it out tomorrow on my day off. Yeah, it should be pretty cool. So. All right. Um, now, in addition to uh, to the happy birthday to T. Pugmire there for folks that are just tuning in, T. Pugmire. Uh, we're, we're doing a, a guessing thing. Like, can you guess how old T. Pugmire is? And nobody's guessing. Nobody's guessed yet. No, nobody's guessed. We'll see. Like, are maybe... there people, are there people watching? So, yeah. well, uh, maybe. Wait, they are. At, at the real check. Donald Trump says, "I'm totally watching. I'm watching. I'm so watching. Nobody watches okay, better than me." Okay, I'm checking right now. <laughs> I'm on YouTube right now, and I'm typing in retro reload. I do want to. I do want to mention before we get too far in the show. We'll, we'll we'll get into some some news and things like that very shortly. Thomas has got some stuff he wants to share with us about Fortnite, and then we're going to actually talk about uh, some of the new uh, free games with gold this month for Xbox, uh, and maybe a couple other topics. But I do want to mention uh, Pixel Girl Plays on uh, on Twitter uh, at Pixel Girl uh, Plays. Um, we're going to actually, um, I'll, I'll include a link down on the doodly doo to all this stuff for folks that are watching live. There's already some links in the chat. Um, huh. through justgiving.com, for those that aren't familiar with what's going on, Versus. so Pixel Girl Plays, um, recently discovered, uh, her and her mom recently discovered that her mom is actually, um, she's actually not going to be with us shortly because of, um, terminal lung cancer. Which is pretty oh. sad, yeah. But, um, but that said, um, Pixel Girl and her mom have decided that they're going to make the most of the time remaining, uh, and they have done a series of things. They've they've dyed their hair rainbow color, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but then they've also uh, they've also launched um, a a uh, a fundraising effort, not for themselves, interestingly enough. But for a, a organization called Julia's House, uh, which I've also included a link to in the chat, and I'll include links in the description of this video when we're done um, so you can find out what it's about. But Julia's House, basically, in a nutshell, 
Um, they provide um, emotional support and other forms of support for families uh, with which actually have life limited children. So, so kind of the opposite scenario of what what um, uh, Pixel Girl and her mom find her find themselves into. Um, you know, the uh, there's some families where the reality is the parents are going to outlive the children, and that can be a pretty tough thing to come to terms with and to deal with. And so, this organization, Julia's House. Um, kind of provides like a, a support a support system and a support program to kind of help out those folks to make the most of their of their time and to uh, to have the strength that they need to kind of move on um, after you know after things kind of happen. So I thought it was really cool that they're choosing to to um, you know support uh, a charity um, that feel that they feel passionate about. Um, and to, to, to kind of spend their, their remaining moments doing that, building up memories. So she's been sharing that on, uh, on Twitter. And you might notice that we've been sharing and we retreating those posts. She's also got some live streams that she's doing. There's been one or two giveaways for those live streams, uh, just kind of trying to drive awareness uh, for it. And if I can see how much she's raised uh, so far. So, so far, um, she's trying to raise a thousand pounds. Um, and so far she's raised 530 pounds. So, um, they're about halfway, uh, to their, uh, you know, halfway to their goal. Um, so I would encourage you if you've got a few bucks, it doesn't have to be a million dollars. Um, you know, if you've got a few bucks, consider, consider contributing, uh, a week or two ago, I actually skipped my pickups for that week. And instead of getting pickups, I contributed so I'm not saying that to humble brag, but I'm just saying, like, if you think, oh, I don't have the money, I can't help. Um, it is a good cause. You might want to think about if you went a week without pickups or two weeks without pickups, could you maybe scrape up 10 bucks or 20 bucks? Um, you know, I, I certainly think that uh, you could make a big difference in somebody's life by doing that. So um, maybe consider, um, you know, contributing to that. So. We'll switch gears completely. Um, Thomas, I believe uh, you've got some details about some of the Fortnite updates that have come up, right? Yeah. So I haven't been able to play it. However, my best friend Connor, I'm going to give him credit. I don't know if he's watching. Tomorrow I'll call him up and tell him to watch it, especially at this part. Because... Yeah, skip everything else. Skip my dad rambling. <laughs> skip, skip to minute, you know, 23 or whatever the heck, wherever we are. <laughs> Well, yeah, you can. You don't have to skip or anything, but um, anyway, I'm giving Connor all the crap for this. If it weren't for the fact that I faced on him yesterday, I won't have this news. Anyway, before I start rambling on about nonsense, um, so some of you guys may have seen on YouTube people messing around on uh, this new mode that they added for sandbox called sandbox mode or playground mode. It's basically a sandbox for Fortnite Battle Royale. So something I've been really excited for. However, according to my friend Connor, when he 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 I th I think he played it, or or maybe something else happened. I don't know. Um, he, but um, I'm pretty sure he played it. But um, within a little within a few hours of them releasing it, they had to pull it down because there weren't enough servers for everybody like the the way playground were uh playground mode works is you would you could have up to four people join the game and then you can like do whatever you want so you can get like maximum resources in seconds after destroying stuff you can get like shopping carts and just build ramps and roller coasters and stuff like that you can you can kill people repeatedly if that's your thing, or a new idea for those of you who haven't thought about doing so, it. When it so then, back. is this is this a mechanism for folks to actually learn the game without the the threat of like just getting dead and having to keep joining games? Yeah, and dying? yeah, that's that's actually one of the reasons. That's actually I I think that's I think that maybe one of the reasons they have it, but I mean. I don't yeah, know. There is no tutorial for, for yeah. Fortnite. So one of the things that's very difficult for me is like 
Tyler, you don't listen to me. If you were to listen to me when I first say it, you would not Thomas, be dying repeatedly. So first, first of all, first of all, every time I listen to you and I'm stop someone you. open the menu, I end up dead. Right? When I'm just walking around saying I don't give a shit about building stuff, I'm just gonna like hide and shoot people when I see them. I do fine. But as soon as he's like, Dad, go around that corner and like open up the menu and do this thing, boom, dead. Like because earlier you would not listen to me. No, like I listen to you. I'm dead. Anyhow, no, it's, it's funny because I think you and I were talking about this this past weekend about Fortnite yeah. and the the fact that there's no tutorial. You sort of log in and die because I don't have to play it either. Right. So it's nice that they're adding something like that. Yeah. Did now now Tyler, you've been enjoying the Switch lately. Did you did you grab Fortnite for the Switch? I did not yet. You should definitely check it out. One of the things I was impressed with in the, the handful of times that I played Fortnite on the Switch, the frame rate is really good. The graphics, kind of the cell shaded 3D graphics that they go for, really work well on the Switch. And the other thing is that um, Microsoft and Sony have implemented crossplay in a really smart way. If you set up an Epic Sony Games account, do anything but crossplay. Yeah, it, it, uh, but on, Sony is pretty stupid. About something. <laughs> yeah, they've got their reasons. I, I'm not saying that I necessarily like it or agree with it, but uh, one of the things that you can do with the the uh, Switch and the Xbox version is you can link it to your Epic Games account, and you can carry over your progress and that kind of stuff from one platform to another, which is really awesome, actually. But really you good. can't on the PS4 because if you if you've created an account on the PS4, yeah, you can't because I, I a lot of people run out of that, and that, that's what I've been holding off. Yeah, waiting yeah. So for that's, to fix that. I don't think that they're going to fix that. Honestly, I think that's by design. Um, well, yeah. So it it is un it is unfortunate that they've decided to, to kind of do that. But um, one of the things I really like though is so the PlayStation or, or I'm sorry the Xbox One X version runs at I think uh, 30 frames per second and uh, uh, really really smooth and uh, 4K. Uh, which is kind of neat. So uh, it looks amazing on the Xbox One X, but sometimes if I just want to kind of play it in the evening and kick back and, you know, uh, still be with the family or something and they're doing something else, watching Netflix or whatever, I can load up the Switch and play it. Um, this more so than Doom or any of the other stuff. I know Doom and Wolfenstein 2 and stuff have come out for the Switch. Those ones I can definitely tell that quality and corners were cut yeah. to get it to kind of fit. I did not feel when I played Fortnite, to their credit, I did not feel like they had cut anything or or dumbed anything down in order to get it to work on the Switch, which is really a part One of it, of I think, the, is the art style that they picked with the game. But the other part, part of it, of it is, I think, it, Epic has done an amazing job fitting all that into the Switch. Another part of it, though, is that Fortnite is actually something that many people are happy about, is no matter what platform you get on, Fortnite has a lot less storage than other games that you would play so yeah which again i think is due to the art style that they picked you know they're not going for like the biggest most crazy epic textures of all time they're not going for hyper realism um, which i mean going for fast frenetic gameplay and they they excel in that the only challenge is to your point tyler with no tutorial me old man me is like i know how to shoot people and i know how to like hide but like, I don't know how to use this build system, and every time I try, I get shot in the face, like, within two seconds of opening the menu, so I don't even bother opening the menu anymore. So some other things they can be happy about, which they haven't they haven't been put down to be edited, unlike Playground mode, which it should come back. I hope it's a permanent mode because it would really help people out. But another thing that people should be happy about is they added um, this really good gun. Like, my, my friend's... My friend really likes it. They're the double pistols. They come in uh, legendary and an epic. And I don't know much about them since I haven't really played with them. Yeah. But double pistols. My friend showed me a texted me a video of him doing a. He's on a bounce pad in a fort that he and a friend were building. He jumps onto a bounce pad and he no scopes some guy and kills him using the double pistol. Oh wow. And, like, it looks like he killed the guy with the rocket launcher, but if you were to look really closely and if you were to look at the death message, at the time, it was actually he killed the guy with um, double pistols, which is really cool. Um, another thing that's also pretty cool about it is um, how they've managed to 
they a lot a lot of people, especially me, have been getting really mad about this. And I just I kind of think there's sometimes where it just gets turns to be like super bull crap, and other times where it's like seriously, why isn't this removed? But um, pump shotguns, the most powerful shotgun in the game. They used you used to be able to one shot people if you hit them in the head, which like if they're at 100 health or 200 shields, that would suck because I t I'm telling you guys right now, I've had more games than I can count where I'm with my friend Connor, and I get this really awesome thing like a legendary scar or like a legendary bull action sniper, which. I never really am able to use anyway since I don't find myself with sniper events. But anyway, I was pretty I, good at sniping the last couple of games that I played. I've I did use the hunting good. rifle. The hunting rifles, although some people do say it's like a deagle with drop, and they say it's bad. It's actually I have no idea what the hell that even means. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Snipers have bullet drop. A deagle, the deagle, a desert eagle. Deagle, 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 deagle. <laughs> That's what I tell Connor every time he from, says uh, that. From Gremlins, right? That's the only yeah. deagle I know. Deagle, 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 deagle. Yeah, it's, uh, deagle stands for Desert Eagle. Oh, it's, okay, okay. But um, honestly, the hunting rifle is pretty decent. It's a decent weapon to get. Okay. So, anyhow. Yeah, I, I do have to say, though, in, in Epic's defense... I think if somebody was to get shot in the face in real life with a shotgun, they'd pretty much be one hit killed. I don't I know, know anybody. I don't know anybody that would survive that. So, uh, yes, maybe from a gameplay perspective, maybe it sucks. But uh, I don't know anybody that could take a shot to the face and live. But I mean, it was more annoying that you'd be at two hundred shields and full health, and you it got shot happened. in the face. I know, but like I, I get what you're saying though with the shield, right? With the shield, you're expecting maybe. Maybe you lose Maybe, the shield, yeah. right? But you're like, not expecting... I mean, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. But then, boom, they want to hit you. And then, for people like me who... There have been times where, like, I'll see the opponent's AFK, and I'll go up to them with a pump shotgun, and I'll put it right next to their face and just shoot them. But then, they don't get... Like, they're only at, like, two health or something like that. And then, they just... They get out. They get back from whatever they were doing. They go out. They go out there with a pump shotgun, and then they magically one hit kill me by shooting me in the face. Like right there, they're like, they're like this, and they're like, bam, and then I'm dead in seconds. It's yeah. It's just so infuriating. So they they nerfed the shotgun so it didn't, so it doesn't do that much damage when you do a headshot. Although oh, okay. it still does quite a lot. So. Yeah. It's something you gotta keep an eye out for. So another thing, speaking of, this is an excellent segue. Another thing to keep an eye out for, folks, is this month on Xbox Games with Gold. Um, we're not getting sponsored to say this, uh, even though it may sound like it, because the delivery was so was so spot on. But no, the the um, recently uh, Crowded Attic and I have uh, we've been trying to play different uh, games that have couch co op, so we can do some father son gaming time. And um, recently we finished uh, Gears of War, the, the Gears of War um, Ultimate Edition, the first one. And we've moved on to Gears of War 2. Uh, which That was is, pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's not I'm really still nasty. trying to get Dad to play Horde Mode, which I know is really no. popular. No, Dude, but, uh, Horde Mode is like multiplayer co-op. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. So, um, Whatever. So, Tyler, <laughs> I, I like the story... Pants. I like the story mode and the progression better. I don't, I don't know. Monthly player is not my deal uh, anymore. Um, but Tyler, you've played Smash TV before, right? A uh, long time ago, yeah. So did you, did, I've you seen Smash games, TV. Like, um, did you play any games like Heavy Barrel for the NES or Akari yeah. Warriors or oh. anything like that? Guerrilla War? So yeah, I love Heavy, Heavy Barrel, actually. Yeah, so um, I've, I've got a copy of that, too. Um so the uh, another game. Um, did you ever play? Um, I want to say Soldier of Fortune, but that's not the game. Total Carnage. You ever play that? Does this sound familiar? So Total Carnage is a pretty good game. It's it's kind of like they took the overhead view and the shooting style and everything of Smash TV, but then they made it open world. Huh. So it it's kind of like Smash TV on steroids. Anyway, wow, um, that sounds so like fun. We've been playing. There's a game that's free this month on Games with Gold 
uh, which is totally so, totally fun. It's make called, sure not to miss it. Yeah, it's called Assault Android Cactus. I kn- now I know it sounds like some weird knockoff of another game that might be a similar style, but no, it's not a knockoff name or or anything. What, what like other that. game are you thinking that that is even close to that name? I don't know. No, well, no, not you're just that. Saying, just... You're just saying random. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like. like... They'll be like I, I've seen this in all bootleg stuff. They'll name it some ridiculous name. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a bootleg. And they'll add some ridiculous stuff, but it's not a bootleg. So assault android cactus. Cactus is the name of you play this this little android robot that's a police officer, like a space police officer, and um, you end up uh, landing on this this cruiser ship. It's like a civilian <laughs> ship, and for whatever reason, it's attack. The cruiser ship is attacking. Uh, people and everything so you land your your little ship there only to find out that all of the machines and androids that are on the ship uh supposing to like provide service to the people like the gardening robot and things like that they've all gone crazy and they're basically assaulting assaulting the people on the ship and so your little your android cactus is her name um you have to basically go through all these levels and missions to shut down all these rogue robots and reclaim the ship and so, uh, but the, the style is an overhead, uh, style very much in the smash TV, uh, yeah. kind of, uh, kind of, um, uh, style it's to be clear. If you look at the screenshots, the screenshots, the game doesn't look like much. And if you look at the cutscenes, the animations for the cutscenes and the graphics are really, really basic. Um, but what is I mean, really, wasn't awesome it like an Xbox that, 360 title? No, it's actually it's actually a full Xbox uh, hmm. One X enhanced title, actually, which is kind of interesting. And so, was, what did I was, it used to be an Xbox One nope. title? Nope, it just has very basic, uh, very basic graphics. And how this works for the game, though, is the game plays at a rock solid sixty frames a second. And in like when I compare it to Smash TV. Anybody that's played Smash TV knows that there's kind of like a, a, a difficulty curve that spikes like this. Right? <clears throat> Start out the first whole uh, episode, if you will, of Smash TV. You can kind of get all the way to Mutoid Man um, without too many deaths, maybe even without a single death at all. And if you're really good, you can even beat Mutoid Man. But then once you get into the second episode, <clears throat> things get really di- ridiculously difficult really quick. And the, just the amount of enemies that you get can completely overwhelm you. If you if you're not constantly thinking about where you're gonna go and how you're gonna exit or weave through this <laughs> onslaught of enemies, you can easily be overrun. Assault Android Cactus has that dynamic, but they didn't just copy um, Smash TV. They do some things that uh, I haven't really seen any other games that are this kind of like arcade shooting type game do before. They have conveyor belts. They have uh, levels that literally rebuild shift. themselves while you're playing, and they'll <laughs> shift and change. Um, the sound is absolutely great. Uh, the action is intense. And so I yeah. think when you're in the throes of it, <laughs> you're not really complaining about the graphics because they look more than good enough to get the job done at 60 frames a second and at 4K. You'll so, just be complaining about how much of a noob at the game you are because you keep dying depending on who you are. Or you'll be complaining that you're too good at the game. And that you just can't die or or lose. Now, speaking so. of when you die, what was kind of interesting is when you die, there's this song uh, that now, goes be- on. Before you start talking about the song, we need to explain the death, <laughs> the way death works. Like if an enemy starts bashing you or shooting you repeatedly, it knocks you down. So you have to you have to press the fire button to get back up. But you'll have to collect these things called batteries, which will recharge your battery. If you let the battery go low, that's it. Game over. Yeah. And when you get game over, this song plays. (laughs) And the song, you can actually find it on iTunes. And you can. So if you look up Assault Android Cactus on iTunes, you can download this song for free. You can buy the whole album, but this particular song you can download for free. And it goes. I'm just a little android, and my battery's running low. It's like it's like <laughs> an entire song about an android 
running on low battery. The song, yeah, the song goes on. I'm not, I'm not saying like a little short clip that like loops. I mean, the no. clip does loop, but this is like a five minute song with like yeah. four or five distinct verses, and it is just the most adorable song. Like, like the, when it starts singing it, you're like, okay, this is this is like you so get, adorable. I just have to sit here and pretty, listen to the entire song. You can get pretty sad from it, maybe. Or, yeah, you're feeling all bad because you're like, oh, I have to play like the poor little Android. And what was really interesting is, so I know that you can play two players. Yeah. Um, I'd have to look at the game uh, description to see what the maximum number of players is. I actually don't know. I think know. it might be four. I don't know. It I, looks like it I could be a four-player game. Um, but, uh, but there's definitely at least two. And I can <laughs> attest there is zero slowdown, zero you know zero anything as much as i love retro games uh like smash tv and stuff like that there's always the home slowdown. console versions you could tell they were really pushing it uh with the screen tear and the glitchiness and everything there is there is no hint of that with this this game is liquid smooth on the xbox one x uh and looks great from the couch uh when you're just in that heavy duty play like i said if you're if you're to capture still frames or whatever it's kind of sad because I think maybe a lot of people have panned the uh, the game because in in screenshots it doesn't look like all that. In fact, the first five seconds of me, the title screen looks really good, and then I fire it up and it starts playing like the intro uh, movie, I guess, the cutscene, and I go, "Wow, like this is really basic, you know, basic graphics and and super basic textures," um, and they're selling this as like an Xbox One X enhanced title. <laughs> And then it got into the gameplay, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, I'm sweating here. Like, this is intense. And uh, I didn't, like I said, at the, at the time, I didn't care. Like, the graphics were definitely good enough to get the job done. And what's really cool is you, as you play the different levels and the different missions, um, you collect credits. And you can use those credits to unlock a whole bunch of uh, different characters. gameplay modes, different characters, um, different gallery items. So the replay yeah, value on this is fairly high. Dad unlocked it character named Starch after defeating the first boss and I played as that one. That one it's an interesting robot it, or android, sorry. It um instead of having a machine gun or whatever other guns they have choices from, it fires a continuous laser, which makes it rather effective at clearing the room of uh foes. Like I, I had the strategy while well, just I'll play as them. I'll hold the fire button. I'll just spin my character around multiple times, and I'll take yeah. out multiple enemies at once. And then his secondary weapon are a bunch of homing missiles. Yeah, and the secondary weapon is kind of interesting. So th that's that's another thing that they kind of add above and beyond the Smash can, TV formula. What's interesting about secondary weapons is um, they're way more powerful than your primary weapon, but they can only be used for a tiny bit of time. So, um, Cactus's short term, it's like Cactus's secondary weapon is, um, a flamethrower. I don't know any of the other characters' flamethrowers. I know Star. Secondary weapon, sorry, not flamethrowers. Um, I also know that, um, Starch has a, um, Starch also has, like, homing missiles. Well, it's cool. It's something that you didn't know about, Dad. <laughs> Is that if you, right after you switch back to your gun, way right after it forces you to switch back to your gun, if you switch back to the other weapon again, it's you can use it again. Like, I knew that already. After that. Oh, really? Then yeah, why weren't you doing already. that? I was doing that quite a bit on the bosses. Really? Yeah, yeah. I only saw you like, bang, 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 bang. Whoosh! Bang, 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 Floosh. Like that. You weren't doing it like I was for, like, bang. All right. Well, thank you for the visual. That definitely helps. So, visuals make everything better. Last week, switching gears. Last last week, um, we actually talked about um, we talked about a couple things, but one of the things in particular we talked about was stuff that we enjoyed from E3. And uh, since we didn't have you on the show at that time, I wanted to ask you, since we have you on the show now, um, did you have a chance to to catch anything from E3? And and is anything is there anything you're particularly excited about, uh, whether it's E3 or just something that you know is up and coming? 
Oh, hey guys, yeah. and congratulations, Tyler. Uh, Phaser oh, Cole. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks, man. Hey, Phaser Cole. <laughs> um, as far as E3 goes, I, I only watched the uh, Nintendo presentation, which was pretty much all Smash Brothers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, which looks cool, you know. Um, uh, what what didn't get a whole lot of press, as far as I was aware, was the the Retron seventy seven, um, and it's been something that's been been talked about for a while, and it's they they finally kind of revealed it at E three, um, the first like playable you know version of it, and yeah. it actually comes out next week or no, this Saturday. Wow, really? Yeah. Yep, seventh seven. Yep, July seventh is when it's supposed to ship. Um, so for those who don't know. <laughs> It is wow. a. It's it's from uh, Hyperkin, who made the other Retron systems. Yeah. And it's the first that I'm aware of, the first uh, Atari 2600 clone that yeah. has HDMI output, so you can use it for your your HD TVs. Now, the only thing I'm kind of bummed about was that it would have been really cool if they had made it an Atari 7800 mm-hmm. clone, um, and then they could have because same cartridge factor, right? They could have yeah. uh, they could have read both 7800 as well as 2600 games. But to your point, it's the only uh, Atari. Well, I can't say it's the only. Like it's it's the first Atari clone I think that we have that's not an AT Games clone. And while Hyperkin is not known for like you know um, you know BMW level quality, um, they're definitely a step you know several steps above AT 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 games. No offense to them, but um, but they're they're at games. I think works with a different <laughs> budget and a different price point target audience than what Hyperkin deals. So, well, yeah, because there's yeah. the at games one doesn't take cartridges. It's well, just, they did like, have it, one version that well, did. They did. Yeah, they did they have did. one version that did, but right. um, but yeah, I think the other the other distinction though is that uh, all the at games ones were effectively weren't they emulation all of them? Yeah, and this is actually based on Cell on the the, the Cell emulator, which is an it's an older version of it, so some things might not work. But but the cool thing about this one is it's the as far as I'm aware, it's totally open source, so it's only a matter of time before you know they they upgrade Stella and it gets better and it has you know more uh, uh, compatibility, uh, but it, it looks promising. I think right out of the box, it might not be what everybody's after, but I yeah. think it's going to get there. So I'm just excited to have a, um, I'm excited to have a, uh, you know, Atari system that uh, can play the games from the cartridges. So although with the emulator, it's sounding like, uh, you know, folks with a, uh, with a Harmony cartridge need not apply, right? Yeah. Uh, Harmony cartridge does not work for some reason. Yeah, but, I think it's the that, same as the Retron Five, right? They, the way that they go to do the ROM dump, they can't interact with the they can't interact with the cartridge in real time. They can just dump the ROM and play. Yeah, but again, that's one of the things that might be able, able to fix, might be able to be fixed, um, you know, with the open source uh, software, because the current version of Stella, as I understand, does work with Harmony Card. Really? Yeah. Hmm. As far as I know. I may be I may be wrong on that. That's that's quite interesting. Speaking of speaking of the uh, uh, flash carts, uh, SD to SNES. Do I have it up here? Is it is it here? Can I see? Um, no, it doesn't look like I have it up here. I must have it downstairs. But anyway, the SD to SNES. Uh, Akari, who is the primary developer of the uh, software for the uh, SD to SNES. Um, it's a Super Nintendo cartridge that takes SD cards and allows you to pop it into a real uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System or a hardware-compatible uh, clone system. Uh, and basically, you can put all your games on there. It has Game Genie and Save State support and all this stuff. Um, for a long time, it has not supported Star Fox because, or any of the other Super FX games because uh, the, the cartridge uses an FPGA on board. So what's really cool is... In addition to the ROMs, there was a lot of Super Nintendo games that had special chips, like Donkey Kong and some of the Mega Man games had special chips for the compression or the Super FX chip for special processing. And um, up until present, um, Akari had developed a lot of the... Akari? Um, Akari, yeah. I, I, so um, hmm. Akari made, um, you know, programmed the FPGA to be able to emulate the different compression chips and graphics chips and stuff. And so you could play the Mega Man games, you could play Donkey Kong Country, you could play Super Mario World, but games that needed super effects, games like Yoshi's Island, Doom, 
Star Fox, Star Fox 2. You couldn't play uh, on the uh, on the thing. Well, another guy who actually goes by the name of Red Guy. <laughs> um, let me, in fact, I'm going to look this up to make sure I get his name, uh, his name totally right. Um, let me see. SD2, SD2, SNES. Um, let me see here. I think it's just Red Guy. Yeah. So, um, ver so firmware version 1.8 of uh, the SD to SNES operating system is out now. Um, and it's super, super FX support by Red Guy. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, now you can play Star Fox and you can play all the other games. <laughs> um, and Red Guy, not to, be, uh, not to be outdone, there was one other chip that wasn't a very popular chip, but it's an important chip, SA1. SA1 chip was never implemented for the FPGA for SD to SNES. And those that are super, um, super Nintendo... <laughs> tech savvy will know the SA1 was used in Super Mario RPG. Huh. So that means that the SD to SNES previously was so not was, able. Uh, what's, what what do you call it? One. What's thing. that? What were the, what you call it? The, the savvy thing or whatever you call it? The, the, S, the SA1 basically was a chip that uh, allowed the, I don't know if it was a compression chip or if it was a graphics chip or both, but basically the SA1 uh, <laughs> allowed Super Mario RPG to have the, the graphics, uh, was widely considered to be some of the best graphics on the Super Nintendo period, end of story. <laughs> So, um, but it's made it notoriously difficult both to emulate as well as to, um, you know, uh, normally either you find the cartridge itself or you find somebody that's done a repro, but repros don't really make any sense because you have to cannibalize <laughs> basically a, a Super Mario RPG uh, cart to make a Super Mario RPG cart. So it was difficult to repro. It was difficult to emulate. Um, I think the Retron 5 was one of the few consoles that could actually play it at all um even a lot of hardware uh emulators or not hardware emulators <clears throat> but a lot of hardware clones had difficulty with super mario rpg and so to have the ability to for some people it's also a very pricey game now uh on ebay and things like that so to be able to get it in rom form and play it on a real super nintendo uh through the sd to snes is is a real is a real win so red guy 1.8 does not support sa1 yet but the reason that i bring it up is that red guy has actually been posting some videos to youtube about hey guys look what i'm working on next i just can't help myself so um and he's showing working footage of of um super mario rpg so a lot of folks are really really excited that uh the sd to snes might be the first and only um you know um the first and only uh, multi-cart, um, you know, that that can that can actually play every Super Nintendo game or, or close to every Super Nintendo game. So that's been kind of cool. So anybody that's in the Super Nintendo scene and thinking of getting themselves an SD to SNES, you can grab one of those at StoneAgeGamer.com. Um, again, I'm not getting paid for that plug, but that's where I got mine. Um, and what's really cool is they they kind of go all out. You can get a normal basic one. You can get just the board <laughs> or you can get a, a full up like, you know, different color cartridges and a special custom case with stickers and all that. They call them the deluxe editions. My myself, I figure, you know, why well, have the simple version for cheap when you can have the deluxe edition <laughs> for crazy money? So um, so I usually I get myself the, the deluxe editions of those because um, they just really do a fantastic job on them. So. So some things to, to kind of uh, look forward to. Thanks, Tyler, for the, the Atari uh, 77, right, they call it? The, the Retron 77. The Retron 77. Um, I hope that it's successful, mainly because I want to see if they, you know, I, I want to see if they go further with it. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know if, if Hyperkin themselves will, but the, just the fact that they're doing open, that they're allowing it to be open source, because as you know, they got some hot water with the, Retron 5 with their emulators. So they want to avoid all that, make it open source so you can do whatever, you know. Yeah. So I think I think the, the major things will be solved. When you say make it open source, are you saying that they're going to directly allow 
uh, the the software of the Retron 77 to be modified by the end user? Yep. No hacking required? Nope. That is pretty awesome, actually. That's really awesome. Um, maybe we'll get a re-release of the Retron 5 with that kind of... Uh... Well, from what I understand, the, the one of the reasons they're going with the older version of Stella that doesn't have all the bells and whistles mm -hmm. is because of... Uh, the license? Oh, how do I put that? Yeah, yeah, the licensing. Because, you know, and, 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 again, I'm not an expert. I'm just this is what I've kind of gleaned from co different conversations is that there are right. so many contributors to Stella and that I reckon we need to get every single one's permission, I guess. Yeah, I can see the current releases. Uh, releases are released under the L, or wait, they're released under the GPL, the GNU public license, which basically means. They, they they have to make sure that folks can get access to the source, that folks can modify the source and redeploy the source. So um, it is nice to see that they're, to your point, right, what will be nice is I expect a homebrew community will uh, will instantly, right, cling to the, if the, if the hardware of the device is decent enough to actually, um, you know, run at decent speed, I would not be surprised if uh, we end up seeing... Um, if we end up seeing something like Atari 7800 support or something like that, just from the community themselves. Yeah. And the, the other thing I forgot to mention is it also um, supports loading uh, ROMs off an SD cartridge. Um, but Ooh, there, so but, no, so no harmony required then. No, but well, there is a limit, um, which is, I think it's like, I can't remember the, the number of, of games you can put on. It's a pretty low number though, which oh, again, really? Which again is something that I think they're the homebrewers are going to try and get off. You know, they're going to change that. And then the other thing is, is that it's I've heard that it's supposedly going to come with a couple of homebrew games that have been sort of uh, not really donated, but like they these yeah. homebrewers have given Hypercon permission to include the games with the console. What would be amazing? I'm looking at their product page right now, and I'm looking at the product uh, the product description. It's from Hyperkin Lab. Um, so that's only 70 bucks, too. Yeah, the price is gonna be 70 bucks, which looks pretty cool. To your point, the expected ship date is July 7th, 2018, which is awesome. Um, let's see, it says, um, plays your games in 720p HD. Um, it comes with a uh, the button, the controller's actually got two different buttons on it, it looks like. So, um, now that already is promising. There's two different reasons that they could do that. One reason could be right-handed versus left-handed. Yeah, that's um, what they're, that's what they've, they've said so far. Okay. What would be interesting to know though is if that's also maybe a hint that um, maybe 7800 support isn't that far-fetched, right? Maybe maybe it's just an update, a system update away. Um, it does support two controllers, supports the different switches. It has dedicated buttons for saving and loading, which is pretty neat. Um, so it says, uh, two button ambidextrous premium controller. Um, you can also use your original joysticks and paddles, uh -huh. which is pretty cool. Um, it, it's powered by a micro USB cable. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So it says that, uh, <laughs> you can change from color to black and white mode, which is kind of <laughs> anybody that remembers the original system that was part of it. <laughs> Uh, as far as homebrews yeah, go, I, I want to just give a shout out now for, for some of the homebrews that you should definitely look at. Uh, go to atariage.com, and if you just search the, uh, the, the forums there for Atari homebrews, uh, you will find some real gems. There's some arcade accurate uh, you know, homebrews of Frogger. Of somebody, wants to make, somebody made a Mario game for the Atari. Yeah, they, they like made them. Levels was really neat. Yeah. The, and the, there's also like a second version of combat where you can like build your own base. Yeah. And then start shooting people with tanks. So for those of so for those people who thought combat for some reason was the game of, of the poor people, I read that in a game informer. Like some dude said that and game informer replied to that. Yeah. So uh, Combat another game two would have been the game for the slightly less poor people. Yeah. Also, there's really good arcade accurate versions of Donkey Kong. 
uh, for the 2600. And it's really impressive to see these these games uh, like Pac-Man with like complete with all the arcade cutscenes. Uh, Donkey Kong complete with the arcade cutscenes uh, is pretty impressive to see on an Atari 2600. Um, so the uh, but the game that I think really takes the cake, one of the best homebrews I've seen, period, bar none, is a game called Panky the Panda. Oh man, that that one's so freaking hard, <laughs> but it's so freaking cool. It is a soul crushingly difficult platformer game in the vein of um in the vein of like Montezuma's Revenge. So um, but uh, it even has like items that you can that you can use, which yeah. I must admit they did a really good job with it, considering it was a game that the only controls you had was a freaking joystick and a button. Yeah. Yeah, they managed Although to... it's way easier if you managed to plug in a Sega Master System controller. Yes, yes. Way easier. <laughs> that's that's one of the things that we did do, is we ended up plugging in a Genesis controller or a Master System controller. And we ended yeah, up playing... Master System was my favorite. Yeah, so it'll be interesting the, to yeah, see controller. if we can use a Master System with the uh, Atari 7, with the Retron 77. Yeah, from what I heard, that doesn't work. Oh, oh yeah. come on. that that yeah. That's lame. I know. That's lame. There's well, one you there's going to be point. other controllers though as well. Yeah, to your point though, Tyler, uh, you know they're they're it's entirely possible that the homebrew community could uh could fix that. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's really awesome. And the maybe the homebrew community's definitely been taking advantage of their skills with what they've done with the Yeah. The I mean, as far as I'm, the other thing, so as far as I'm concerned, what would be awesome is um, you know, maybe this becomes a gateway into uh a lot of us just want to build raspberry pi devices um and and you know there's a couple ways you could go i mean anybody can build a raspberry pi device and put an sd card on it with games and then boom i've got a you know i've got a my own retro console but it's it's i don't know there's still this nostalgia factor to having the cartridge and plugging the cartridge in so it'd be really nice to have these um, although technically an sd card is just a really 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 extremely tiny cartridge uh, maybe maybe but, but yeah i'll admit putting a giant cartridge just bigger than my hand into a game system that's bigger than my face pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i would like to see some i'd like to see some some consoles like the the retron 77 that have some kind of weight and meat to them that support the the original peripherals mm -hmm. um and the original cartridges um, but but have like swappable user swappable hardware and stuff like that. So I I think that that's um, ultimately probably what's going to end up working out the best for most of us. Um, n most of us being people that already have established collections of the games that they yeah. that they want that have peripherals that they want. To me, um, when you're playing an emulator on Raspberry Pi and you're using you know other controllers that are to me part of playing the game is playing the game with the original controllers. And um, unless it's something like ColecoVision or something like that, where the controllers just suck out loud, like um, the ColecoVision, great console, but the controller—it's literally a freaking number pad with a joystick. It's a calculator with a joystick instead of a screen. Yeah, <laughs> like so. my graph, my graphing calculator could play better games than. Than yeah. the Clico Christian controller. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. So, uh, anything else? So, the Retron Seventy Seven. That's a great. That's a great thing. I totally missed that. Um, anything else, Tyler? I no, I didn't get. Yeah, as far as E three goes, I kind of missed everything else. So. <laughs> My goodness. Well, that I got to say, that was definitely a good a good mention. So, folks, some yeah. things to look out for, right? We'll wrap up the show because we're on time. Some things to be looking out for. Look out for the Retron 77 releasing uh, this weekend, looks like. Look out for uh, Assault Android Cactus, which you can download for free right now if you have an Xbox Games with Gold subscription. Um, and that's a really good couch co-op multiplayer game uh, if you like those, Smash TV. For those of you who are living near Salt Lake City in Utah, <laughs> There's that great game store that Dad and T. Pugmire went to. And for those of you who live somewhere near Santa Cruz, Level Up, uh, the, the Level Up Gaming Store, that that's an awesome place to visit. Yeah, it was a really good. I do have to say um, the, uh, the, the, the store there, what was the name of the store in Salt Lake again, Tyler? 
World's Game Store. World's Game Store. Excellent selection, amazing selection. They had tons of stuff in stock there that I saw that I've never seen in stock other places. Like they had a Sega Master System Zapper there, which was wow, pretty awesome. Yeah, they had a couple Sega Master why is Systems. It, why is it? Why do I have a feeling Sega pretty much copied the Nintendo Zapper? Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo Zapper actually might have been the one that copied Sega. I'm not sure. Sega Master that. System Zapper. Yeah, but um, but I, I was gonna say though the uh, the store there in Utah that we went to the the prices were kind of high I thought personally. Yeah, a little bit. But the selection there was pretty amazing. So if you don't mind that you're maybe gonna pay a bit of a premium, you're gonna find stuff in that store that frankly you will not. I I could not when I saw an Amiga CD32 with like four or five games, I like practically shit my pants. I've never. <laughs> the only time I ever saw one of those was in a Game Pro magazine did you really never, crap your pants no i didn't really crap my pants but yes, i was very did. very surprised <laughs> i was I'm very like, surprised they had again, both models. you're trying to trick us to fake they had both models things. of uh of 3do they had both models of sega cd um i mean again you're gonna pay a bit of a, I, I when i say premium i, I guess you the the prices look like the eBay buy it now prices. We well, yeah, say, say how much was that? Yeah. I mean, was it eight hundred dollars or something? The 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 Amiga yeah. CD thirty two I think was like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot. But I mean, if it if it's the console with those games, I mean, it might actually be worth it, right? Yeah. So, um, these aren't exactly things that you find everywhere. So. If you just want to look in a window shop, definitely go in. You could easily kill an hour just going in and appreciating everything that's there. Um, maybe pick up a free copy of Hannah Montana. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think just, Hannah Montana wouldn't be free. It would be mandatory. They like, a, they'd force you to buy it because I'm pretty sure they, nobody would buy it. They did have a free games no, table. I guarantee you that. Yeah, yeah, they did have a free games table, but they weren't. I mean, I'm not going to claim that they were terrific games, and they wouldn't claim that they were terrific games either. But um, yeah. so yeah, you can definitely check out. They had lots of peripherals there. Um, they had lots of Tony Hawk uh, skateboards. Uh, they had Guitar Hero guitar cases, which I've never seen. I didn't even know that was like a thing. Wait, Tony Hawk skaters in the free pile? No, no, that wasn't in the free pile. That was for sale. But but yeah, that they had Tony Hawk. The free they had actual pile. snowboards or skateboards that you could actually um buy and stuff like that so um had i not needed to fly back i probably would have picked up the sega master system zapper because it was 14 bucks that one was actually um that was priced pretty competitively i looked on ebay later and saw that those zappers are going for like 20 to 30 bucks uh on on ebay but they had it there Dude, what you should have done was you should have bought it leave it pugmire's place and then pugmire could have mailed it out to you so you won't have to worry about security being all up your on your butt saying, hey, you bring a gun, you can't be here. <laughs> we thought about that. The only problem was I didn't have a good way to test it out. They couldn't they couldn't locate a master system power supply. So I wasn't oh. able to verify that it worked. And with those things, you kind of want to verify that it worked. That's a kick in the you, butt. Yeah, if you can't return. So um I will say level up. That was one of the things that level up I think had over um you know over this store that we went to. It had nowhere near the selection, right? Like I, I You'll see some stuff like they had a ColecoVision there in box, and um, you know they had like Super Nintendo and Dreamcast. Level up, the prices were effing awesome. The prices beat eBay like by like a good a good five to ten percent. The level up prices in Santa Cruz beat are eBay. Awesome. And the selection there, as long as you don't want to go farther back than say you know original Nintendo, they had some. They even good... got some new games that just came out. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, folks, there's some places to check out. There's some games uh, to check out. Uh, tune in uh, next week, and we'll be talking a bit more about uh, different games and things that we find as we're out there in the wild. So, Tyler, and don't forget, now that shotguns and Fortnite have been nerfed, you don't have to worry about getting shot in the face by some noob anymore. Yeah! <laughs> so, if that was something you worried about, you don't need to worry no more. <laughs> Tyler, my friend, you're fading into darkness. No, let's get. I need to get closer to the screen. <laughs> screen's your only sense of light. Tyler, we have missed you. People have been asking on Facebook, uh, "Where is?" Like I, for some reason, people don't remember your name. Like everybody's like, "Where's the CDI guy?" What? Yeah. Where's I, the CDI guy? What? Yeah. I mean, so, 
Even when I wasn't on the show, I could still remember T. Pugmire's name. Damn. I don't even Oops. remember a guy named Redbeard He's Gamer and a guy named Mr. He does Nightmare. exist. Is there anything you want to say, Tyler, before we close out the show that you haven't said so far? Um, Not really. Nothing coming to mind. I want to thank you for coming to my, to my birthday party. That was that was cool. Not a problem. For those playing along in the chat, nobody nobody guessed it. Tyler, yeah. you're in the big row. Yep. Boy, yep. one last chance. One last chance for the guys in the chat. How, guess how old he is before we drop the big answer. I just gave the just answer. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude! Dude! <laughs> What was the answer? You're so, you're so eager to like get the comment out there. You're not listening to the commentary. That's funny. Oh, my goodness. Right. That is, that is wanted, such a mental wanted, trait. I wanted to see what the internet would come up with. No, no. S S S S does it count if I guess? <laughs> so, Tyler, my friend, um, 40 years. I think I've known you for three of that 40. Just about. And it's been it's been really great. Always been fun to have you on the show. We've done a lot of stuff. Does it count uh, if I guess? Interviewed I a guess. lot of folks. It doesn't count if you guess. We've interviewed a lot of folks. Um, I turned the big 4-0, I think, in September. I say oh. I think because I have to go back and check a calendar. I believe I'm turning 40. <laughs> so I have to my wife keeps track of these things. I don't keep track. Once once this happened, yeah. Right, like I don't, I don't keep track of the years. I'm like, does it matter? Like I'm bald, I'm old, so I don't need to know exactly how old I am. Aww, you still I was gonna guess. T. Pugmire uh, still has the fabulous, the fabulous head of hair on him. I do. It's just all gray now, so that's okay. <laughs> all right. So, well, enjoy Detroit. Become human. Jeremy and I, I did. Um, maybe, maybe next week or, or you know, in a follow up show, um, you can come on and give us some of your first uh, impressions of the game. Okay, cool. So How, about this? cool. How about this? For those of you who really wanted to guess, guess when I up upgraded my phone. All right, folks. Think about it. <laughs> Drop it down in the doodly doo, and we'll discuss it next week. All right. And I'll give you the correct answer. I All promise. Right. Take care, folks. <laughs>